So again, we'll continue with this unorthodox thing. So I will no longer call it an analysis class, maybe. Okay. But uh, these are general things which are useful for uh, in, in all places. So, yeah. So let me just clean my tab. I didn't teach for the last many days. Yes. So last time we introduced the notion of, so last time, okay. so last time we introduced the notion of partial order. Okay. What are we trying to do here? So basically we have a set. Okay. Basically we, you start with a set, start with a, I will, let me call it, let me be more descriptive. We start with a collection of objects of a similar nature. Okay. Just one more second. This fan is making a lot of noise. So we are starting with a collection of objects of a similar nature means, okay, means the objects in the collection will be all similar. Any examples? Better if you give some examples, which we have not seen last time. What kind of collection of objects you could take like example of one such collection like you, that you can keep in mind. Obviously, uh, one example of one collection is a natural numbers, another is real numbers, and then you have complex numbers and so on. But other more other different examples coming from different places, combinatorial examples. All triangles, right? That's right. All triangles in the plane. So this could be Right, this could be one. Anyone else? Any an other kind of example? Other kind of collection. So you could obviously we took a collection of uh, subsets of a set. And you could take divisors of a number. Obviously, these examples have already given. Um, one more example, which I have not talked, anyone has thought of any examples other than these, you could take, so these are obviously we already know, and we kind of put some orders. Okay. In complex number, okay, so before we go further, can anyone, um, define, describe, define, whatever, a uh, partial order. So we want to order the complex numbers. Okay. So we want to put a relation on the complex between the complex numbers, which is an order relation. Okay. Meaning that it's again, it's transitive and so on, you know, transitive, reflexive, anti-symmetric. Define a partial order on the complex. Let's try to do this because this is actually a very significant, uh, there is a significance to this. Maybe we'll not see that fully, but let's just try to define a partial order on complex numbers. Let's just go try to quickly do that. Then I'll give you a different uh, example. <clears throat> so I suppose complex numbers you guys know, right? Uh, in the plane, pairs of real numbers, A plus IB. So how would you go about defining an order? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Okay, so this is certainly a candidate. This is certainly a candidate. Now let us check if what he is saying is actually an order. So first of all, does everybody understand this? Let, let's just take an example. Okay, so basically you're saying if the difference between the two components, real part and imaginary part is small, then the number is small, yeah? Yes, 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 yeah, sure, sure. So. First of all, um, yeah, so let's take and take the natural numbers, right? Now the natural numbers have an order, right? Have a natural order, right? What is it? Just, just the usual order, right? One is less than two, less than three, okay? But you can, you can think of, you can think of this also as a binary relation. I suppose you know what a binary relation is, right? As a binary relation on N, binary relation on n okay such that it is reflexive right it is transitive and it is anti-symmetric so here, here we will say that a is less than b this just means that a is related to b so the relation is a is related to b if A is less than P. So R is this less than relation. Okay, now you can check that it's a reflexive relation, meaning that R is related to R, sorry, A is related to A, because A is less than, maybe we should call less than equal to, yeah. Okay, this relation, this, this relation is also transitive because if A is related to B and B is related to C, that means A is less than B, B is less than C, then that implies that A is less than C. That which, which means A is related to C, right? So these are the properties that this order has, right? But there could be other relations which also have this property. Do you understand, right? There could be other relations on the natural numbers itself which could have which could behave like an order. Yeah, the where which basically you want to compare the natural numbers. Think of it like this. And maybe this is these different viewpoints are useful for all of us. We want to compare the natural numbers in a different way. So here I will put a new relation, okay? A new let then you can see the contrast. <clears throat> new order. Okay. I will say A is less than B if so. This will not be the usual less than. This is different. A is less than B if A divides B. Now, this is the criteria for my less than. So it's a new kind of new notion of big and small now. It's based on divisibility. Now you, now you can see that not every two elements are related because three is not related to five because three doesn't divide five, five doesn't divide three. But it has the other properties. A divides B, B divides C, then A divides C, A divides A and blah, blah, blah. You understand? So it's a different relation I'm putting on the set, which is behaving like a order. Basically, just I'm trying to compare the elements in a different rule by a different law, different law of comparison. Okay. Let's check if this, I think this is just a review for all of us, but these, these are the different ways to think, okay? Now let us check if this is an order. Meaning the rule is clear, right? So we will, for example, we can use this rule to say that two plus three i is less than, uh, you could say two plus five i. Right, because five minus two is bigger than three minus. So under this rule, this is true. But is this an is this a partial order? Does so as I was saying last time, we are doing an abstraction, right? And so, but but we still want some minimum properties to hold. That's why. So is this a uh, rule? Maybe I'll put an equal to. Yeah. Transitivity holds. But a transitivity will hold. Yeah. So is this rule uh, an order? Yeah. So uh, let me first just say formally reflexive. That is, this is um, obviously true. Is that right? Because uh, yeah, right. Because if you take a one this and then you take a one i b one, then obviously this implies that this is actually equal. So it's also less than equal. So this is obviously trivial. 
so it's reflexive what about now transitive can you explain why why is it trans, why it is transitive so basically it's just an exercise in set relations and so on so, yeah is it transitive That's right, that's right, that's right. So this, and then you have, as you're saying, the other one, I'm slightly behind. So this, uh, if this is bigger than A2 plus IB2, then this, this, this just means that this difference. But is it, the, but guys, you should check, is this, is this anti-symmetric? That is, that is what we need to check, right? And it is not anti-symmetric, I think. This and obviously this inequality and this inequality you can combine and it implies that B3 minus A3, this is just obvious, yeah. Uh, this. And this just means that uh, the third complex number is bigger than the first, which is what we want. Okay, so it so these two notions, it is half satisfying. Transitivity is the most important. one. In order, transitivity is the most important. You realize this later. The generalizations, but is the but all this is fine, but is it no 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 that is not correct. So that is a half uh, theorem you have you have read somewhere, maybe or you remember whatever. No, 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 that is not correct. That is the it is something more deeper is there that there is no order on the complex numbers which respects addition but what that means we can talk about that later that's why i'm saying this is a very good example but no no but there is an order uh, we can easily put orders on comp many many orders on complex but this is not so let's but let's just um, let's just see it you can just see it clearly i want someone to tell us is this um, anti-symmetric So what does this mean? This means that if you take one complex number, A1, or we can just take these two only, these two only which are here on the screen, A1, B1, A1, you can just take A1 comma B1. So if this is bigger than or equal to this, and this is also true, now just break it down. Don't take the full byte at once, but just break it down and what it means and you can answer this. And if this is also true, then does this, does this imply that the complex numbers have to be same? You can just take pairs of, just look at it as pairs of numbers also on the plane. Does this imply that this is equal to A2, and obviously not. No, it's a big no. Someone please explain. Yeah, so this could be bigger than this, and this could be bigger, and the other could be bigger than the first, but still they are not equal. Can you just give an example? Yeah, that's. Uh, mm -hmm. Three plus four, I just. And you can, you guys can check that the, because the difference between these two and these two are the same, right? But uh, they are not. It's not an order. They are not the same. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's fine. 
now we can but but even to this particular rule even to this and this we will see later when we dive more deeply into equivalence relations and such but those who know about this can already think even to this particular order which is to even to this particular relation which is right now not an order so this is a bit carefully we can modify the complex numbers and so that this becomes an order okay so we can put new notions of equality among the complex numbers meaning equivalence relations if you guys are comfortable with that and so that this becomes an order so right now it is what is called a pre order but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, but that will not be enough. You have to say that two complex numbers are equal if the difference of their mod, if if the modulus of their difference, wait. Mm. No, 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 that will not work. So you you have to you have to say that, and this will probably not make sense to most of us, but to all of us. But you have to say that two complex numbers are equal if the difference of their real and imaginary parts modulus is same. that's what you have to basically you have to force that okay so you have to say that you have to introduce a new kind of equality so if you just change the whole game you have to say that this is equal to this if a minus b is equal to c minus t you have to declare this this is geometrically very significant but we will see it later what you are saying will again will not work i think okay yeah you can you can try it out Okay. Anyways, let's let's so can can anybody that's that's something that you can think about. But for now, can can we give a give actually give an example of an order? Come on, someone should be able to. Some of us may have must have seen more maths than others. So can we give an example quickly? It's very simple. Just think of the most simplest thing. I mean, you have orders all over the place, right? You have orders in, uh, I mean, everywhere. You look at your phone book. You look at a dictionary. You everything is order so there will be some order that you can borrow right no no one this is just pairs of numbers these are just pairs of numbers right so i will just say this is bigger than this if just what can you do the simplest thing if this happens and again i have to put the other relation otherwise this will not work and this is okay yeah yeah this this and this is an order you can check so basically it's a coordinate wise it's a component wise thing okay so um you could also say this is yeah yeah oh sorry yeah yeah this is <laughs> <laughs> this is there's no comparison yes yes a1 bigger than right yes right and this is an order you can check this is called a dictionary order right this is how you do in the dictionary right if you have two words you have two words you compare the first letters right and uh what yeah you if no but I, i'm not okay so this may not be just Yeah, but anyways, yeah, you 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 compare the first letters, right? And whichever first letter is smaller, that comes earlier in the dictionary, right? And then once you're done with that, then you compare the second letters, right? And in this way, you move. So the first letter is bigger, so then then you compare the second letters and so on. So it is just something like that. Yeah. Is it is it like that, right? Let's let's just take a minute and convince ourselves. So basically, I am saying that on words, any two words also you can. No, but. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh huh.
that's right but uh, let us just uh, let us just check no no so let's take the first two that you have said if you take this one then yeah by this by by the rule that i've given by the rule that i've given the this one is bigger okay and if you take this two then again by the rule that i've given the first components are equal but then you can use the second one right but let's take a third example if you if you take 1 plus 2i and let's say 3 plus 1i so then which one is bigger Why is the second one bigger? Yeah. Yes, but that was slightly incorrect. Means it was not precise this, uh, right? Now you can see, that's why I'm doing these examples. Yeah, that's right. And that's not certified. So these two are not comparable. Okay, so they are not comparable. You can put the sign whatever. You can just say not comparable. So that's why, that's why this is just a partial order. So it is not exactly like what happens in the dictionary. Okay, so this is a coordinate-wise order, and this is a very important order. Okay, we will see this in graphs and matchings and so on. That, they, but this is a very strict type. But it's just a partial order. It's not total. Okay, so these are small. Basically, we are doing simple exercises in set relations, order, and so on. Okay. But now for homework, and please do this. Okay, don't leave this. Please do this. Give an order on the complex numbers which is complete. Okay, so give a total order, and that is also possible. I think some can already think, but think about this. Okay, you can do it. Just think. Now you have the dictionary and so on with you. Define a total. This is not a total order. Okay, it's a partial order. These are the first steps we are taking. Okay, then we can prove more properties and so on. But this is the first step. Define a total order order on the complex numbers is the homework. Okay, so let me not go what I had planned to give other examples and so on. But let me actually go to the theorems that we did the last time. Okay, because otherwise we'll run out of time and not do what I plan to do. So that that is. Uh, that was the homework we just do the do it. Mm, yeah. So let me just quickly review the so given a post set that given a partially ordered set, we could draw it. Right? Draw a post set. Right? We take the elements which are not bigger than anything and we place them at the very bottom. Right. Then we take the elements that are just bigger than these and we place them uh, you know, above. Right, like this maybe it could be could be like this. Okay, then we take the elements that are bigger than these and we place them top on top and so on. Maybe something like this. Okay, any picture you draw like this, it's just it is just just define an order. You can abstractly define. So it could be, um, yeah, this is fine. This is yeah, it could be all like this. For example, this. Okay. So if I if I give an x and a y, then here we can say that y is bigger than x. Right. And there is nothing in between y and x. Right. And you take a z, then z is bigger. Okay. If you take a w, then what can you say about w and y? Nothing. They are not comparable. Right. Z and w, z is bigger than w. So it is just like this, right? Examples were there and let's see. Now there was something that we had done. Is this fine with everyone? Okay, this is the way you draw it. And uh, you can so review this, but we had done this at length last time. So yeah, now there are two important things in a post set, right? One is the length of 
the longest chain longest chain the chain is basically a set a subset of this poset in which everything is related everything is one bigger than the other and so on right a total order inside this so what is an example of a chain and length of the longest chain we want to look at the longest chain for example this is a a big chain you see if you take these elements that are there in this yellow box they are they actually are total order right they are all related right you can uh, so if you take this uh, if you take this a b c d and e then everything is related right a is bigger than e d is bigger than e c is bigger than d and everything is comparable so that's a chain okay and length of this longest chain we will call this the length of the pore set itself so we're trying to give it a geometric uh, more and more geometric language length of the pore set itself okay so here for example the length now there are different notations in different books but the length i will define is just a number of elements so here 1 2 3 4 5 in this case it is 5 okay so this was one thing now at the other extreme end are the anti chains is that right anti chains can anybody define what they were if you remember exactly exactly yeah right right so what is an example of an anti chain this is an example of an anti chain it is not the it is not the biggest anti chain but it is an anti chain okay uh, i mean what i have circled so you can so w is already there so f maybe okay so example f b and z so they are completely unrelated this is the other end of the thing this will be our decreasing sequences okay but now we will not go to that theorem again okay we will do some see some other surprising applications this is the anti chain okay now we have the largest anti chain obviously there will be right a largest largest anti chain as you can see in this example it is somewhere take a different color completely different color green like this big one a big anti chain is that right now none of these are no, they are not related at all okay so this could be like um, this could be like 2 3 5 7 9 11 2 3 5 7 11 all right they none of them divide each any of them any of the other so okay and you can understand these are the two important things okay then we, what did we say we said that this is the thing we said this size of one second size size of largest anti chain meaning the width this will be the width of the poset this is called this is not the width the largest anti chain this is the width of the poset let me write it here a little bit of a language making is just take a little bit of time but i'm trying to make it intuitive but this is this has this has immense benefits okay later on and it is not some abstract definitions right these are quite we are seeing examples and we have also saw proved one theorem using this so this language and right right from the beginning we were saying right that theorem that we had stated the erdos sizikis theorem it had this push pull kind of forces right you avoid the increasingness get the decreasingness and we just needed a language like this and it's exactly that language okay the width and the length and the width they are kind of opposing forces i mean one of them will be big at least okay so width of the pose and now we have found the language so this is a beautiful display of what math actually does we have an intuition for something being correct okay but then we have to make the definitions and we have to so that so that we agree mathematically agree on the phenomena okay and then obviously we we get more because the language is so efficient that we end up seeing it in so many places and we have a lot of benefits so anyways a bit of the poset now this is the thing largest okay but what did we saw right we saw that the length times the width this will be at least in most cases it will be more but it will be at least the 
size of the post set. Size means the total number of elements. Now this is again, you see something that looks, that looks completely, completely obvious, right? But it's not a proof. I mean, we have not proved it, remember. Have we proved it? No. We, we kind of understand that it makes sense, right? Size of the post set. Okay, this is what we have. Not not proved. So one way to prove it would be induction, but I'm not giving this for homework because even if you have done induction, you may struggle with this because this is a strange, different thing. Okay, so I'm not giving this for homework, and it's not the most important thing to prove this rigorously. Okay, we will see something else and prove it in a different way. But but this is the thing. Everybody is fine with this statement. So in this case, you can see, right? Um, the what is the width? One, two, three, four, five, six, six, and what is the length? Is five thirty. But certainly, I, you can you can always see that there are not more than thirty elements. Number of elements is pretty less. It's six, whatever, ten, fifteen, nineteen, twenty, something, right? Something nineteen elements. Okay, and this will always happen. Okay, and so if the size of the post set is n square plus one, then at least the length, at least this will be n plus one or this will be n plus one, which means an increasing subsequence or decreasing subsequence, which we had, that we had seen last time, I'm not repeating that. Okay. You can you can go back and review it if needed. I don't know if I had posted this uh, on YouTube last time. I will see if I, anyways, maybe, let's see. That is not important. Yeah. If if needed, if you didn't, if anyone needs to revise it, then I'll definitely do it. Okay. So you can tell me. Okay. Now let us just get into a problem. Okay. This is what we saw. Now let's start with the problem, which the statement of the problem is completely doesn't need any post set. Okay. And that's why it's so surprising. So let's see which question I can think here and um, yeah, let us see this. So there are n square plus one. So this is kind of just the same language also. Okay, that's okay. I usually you just have numbers and you have to think, but I'm that tricky part, trick part I'm not so interested in right now. So let's say that there are n square plus one. So this is the problem. n square plus one closed intervals. So it's not a sequence of length n square plus one. Well, it is a sequence, sequence of intervals, but yeah, it is n square plus one closed intervals. Obviously in R, so I'm not writing it. That's what we know. Okay. Well, we need to prove that. So this is arbitrary n square plus one closed intervals. Okay. So maybe we can say like it's a1, a1, b1. A to B to, and you can maybe do this problem in many ways. You can do by pigeonhole principle also. Okay, I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is a much this is a much more efficient and actually a more direct directly goes to the heart of the phenomena. Okay, let's see. So there are these intervals. So this arbitrary, or completely arbitrary. There's no pattern. So we want to show that either there are n plus one such that one is contained in the other, yeah, such that one is con contained in the other, yeah. So they are nested. Either there are n plus one of them which are completely nested, meaning that you know one after the other they would be contained. Okay, meaning that something like this may happen. This and then there is a two b two is you know contained. Maybe I should just. They could be like a one b one, and then a two b two. So either this will happen. This may not happen, but either this will happen and so on, n plus one, any any n plus one, not this particular, okay? I'm just giving an example. 
This is what I mean by one is contained in the other. They can they will define it in the exam as nested and so on. Okay. Or you can guess. Or they are completely disjoint. Or there are n plus one, which are completely disjoint, means that no two of them have anything to do with each other on the real line, are completely, completely, mutually, pairwise, everything, okay? Completely disjoint. So two opposing things again, okay? That's the kind of statement this is. So it will be something like, you know, A1, B1 is there, and A2, B2 is completely outside it, nothing to do with it. A3, B3 is completely n, n plus one like this, but any n plus one it could be, I'm just giving an example. So this is what we need to prove. Okay. We need to show that either one of these two statements hold. As you can see, this is completely similar to the, to the Erdos theorem, right? But again, feels similar, but how is it similar? How do you prove it? And you can just take examples and trials. Okay, you can take examples of five intervals and you will see that um, either three of them are completely inside one or one or the other, okay, and so on. So it's very simple to let's just do an example, right? Those who find it very easy can think, start thinking. We can take this as the first interval, that's not a problem. Now, what would you want to take as a second interval? So you want to take the second interval, which is not contained in this, let's say if you want to avoid that, but also it is not disjoint. So you can try to take the second interval like, like this, half comma, half comma three by two. You see what I'm doing, right? I'm trying to avoid both of both the things, just heuristically so that, okay. then, what should I take as a third interval? I can again take something which is not contained in any of the one of them, but is also okay, not disjoint. So how can I do that? I can do anything, right? I can take four by five and something which is maybe, um, yeah, it's already four by five. So I can take anything on this side. Yeah, so you can see what I'm doing, right? Trying to avoid this, but you'll see I'll, I'll fail. If I take five, I take five. So anyways, let's see zero one, first one, then it's half three by two, second one, and then it is four by five, two. You see what I'm doing, right? They, none of them are contained in the other yet. Yet, are they contained? No. Right, none of them are contained, and also none of them are disjoint. Are any of them disjoint? Okay, check. No, right. Now, what to do next? How do you choose? What should you choose as the next one? Or, or is this is this something wrong with this? Let's think about it. No, this is fine. One more minute. So this one, so this one. But they should also work for n equal to one, right? Yeah, but that that is completely no. But then it should be two of them are contained in the other, right? So this and this are in the other, and then you have this and this, and this is also not contained in this. So this is fine. 
Uh, right. Okay. So yeah. So the question is, what should we take as the next one? Can we? So we need two more, right? We can take two more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. N equal to one case seems to be not working, or are we making a mistake? Let us. Yeah, so you, that's a good point you're making. So let's let's write it clearly. So if n equal to one, then you have n square plus one equal to. Maybe this is not true. But let's see. It should be true. Uh, one is two, right? So it means now. So it means that if you take two intervals. So if I translate this. So if we take two intervals, then. No, so that then this does not work for n equal to one. Okay, it does not work because if you take two intervals, you can obviously take them just like this, right? And uh, yeah, above also, and you can just take like this also. Yeah, 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 something as you have said that's better. Yes, it, it does not work for n equal to one clearly, right? Yeah, because if you take two intervals, then it's not true that two of them are they have disjoint or they are contained in the other. No, so uh, fine, it's not true for n equal to one. It's okay. I mean, fine. But yeah, not what about n equal to two? That's what I'm trying to do. By n equal to two, we need five intervals. So I have created three. But if you take the fourth one, how should you take the fourth one so that it is? Yeah. So certainly you do not want it to be disjoint from the first. So it uh, should intersect with the first. So maybe I can take from here. And then I need to end it. So it's intersecting. Yeah. And yeah, and it should be it should be beyond three by two, and it should be beyond two. So maybe somewhere like this. Now there will be a problem. I think you take the fifth one. So this we can write this as nine by ten and three. Now, how do you choose the fifth one? Till now it is fine, right? Yes. Till now it is fine, yeah. How do you choose the fifth one? Where can I put it? So if I put it here, okay, so it is starting the right of this, then it needs to end beyond one. So maybe we can use the next one, it's the fifth one. So fifth one is with pink. It's important to check this because I have also never checked. Okay, uh, maybe at least I don't remember. The fifth one starts beyond zero. Let's say if it's like this and it's before half, then where should it end? It should end beyond one. Is that right? Yeah, it should end beyond one. Otherwise, it will be contained in zero comma one. And it should end before three by two, otherwise it will contain half. So it has to be like this. Now let's check, does it give us a contradiction or not? Please check. Uh, yeah, let's check. Oh wait, I think I have made a mistake in the statement. Yeah. So either there will be n plus one of them that are completely disjoint. No, no, no. So this is very sorry. Huh? This is obviously not correct. And it was not correct here, right? So either there are n plus one such that, so such that their intersection is non-empty. Their total intersection 
is non which means they share a common point is non empty yes right kind yeah right yeah then the n equal to 1 case is also correct yeah then then this example is doomed and so please uh, try to construct an example uh, you will see that it's now it should be yeah so um, um uh, wanting them to be contained one in the other is obviously too much but uh, yeah that that is never true All right that is never uh, so even if you take infinitely many intervals you will not be able to get that you can you can try that for homework so mimia so um construct example of maybe 10000 intervals i mean you can just find a pattern or just take small okay so construct example of intervals okay such that uh no to and it's very easy to do now you can think no to our disjoint and uh no to our contained so please note this down and try this so contained in the other so what i mean is the complete the question is other complete uh, example of intervals of n intervals for any and do this for any maybe not n i should say m do this for any m so m can be any big number okay so, so my point is that even if it take infinitely many intervals i do not think it is true that uh, you can you it that two of them will be disjoint or you know two of them will be contained no that's not true so you can make an example okay so please try this this is not hard i think okay you can note it down yeah so let us now try to prove this now let's not do examples anymore Let's try to prove this. So, what? How should we put an order so that so that you know being um, completely disjoint maybe is decreasing or so? It's very. It should be very clear what the order should be. Maybe let's see. Yeah, it maybe it's not completely clear. <laughs> so please note this question down. This one, then I'll release this, or maybe you can see it later. Yeah. So the question is, how should we? Uh, what order should be introduced on the intervals? What order should we should we put? on the intervals You see, so we have to introduce a notion of order. What should that be? So this will be something special, I think. This will not just be the good old set. You know, we can say if uh, interval is other than the other, if it's contained. No, I think it will be something more interesting that we have to. That's the mistake I was making. I was just having that good old order in mind, and I wrote the question. So then I realized this. We realized that it's not correct. We need to introduce a relation, okay? Basically, on these intervals, yeah. 
Yes, that's what I have in mind. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. So, so something like that. Yeah, this will be uh, this, this. So yeah, one of them will be an anti-chain and one of them will be a chain. So, but, but with that in mind, what should be the order? I mean, obviously, if you think you can think backwards, but think backwards and maybe come up with an order and tell us, or you can just think in a more, you know, just by, anyways, just think, let's just think. Sorry. So we have to introduce an order so that one of them becomes a chain. So it's, it will be something very elegant based on what is written. So let's see, I mean, if this becomes a chain, think if this becomes a chain, then what should the order be? So this is a bit like thinking backwards also. Right? So this should form a chain, design plus one things. So basically given two intervals, what should, when should we say one is less than the other or greater than the other or not related. But basically, first of all, we want to see what should be the rule, you know, of calling, let's say, A1, B1 less than A2, B2. So if the completely disjoint is a chain, it means that obviously these two should be disjoint. Then we will say that one of them is less or bigger than the other, right? So first condition should be that they are disjoint, right? So they are disjoint, but then how do we decide which one is bigger? Is it clear to everyone, right? If we want this to be to become the chain, now this may not work, then we'll have to go work with this one, but it seems this is more, no? uh, yeah. Or I think both will work. One can just rotate the post or something like that. But in any ways, they are disjoint. This should be true, right? Because completely disjoint, N plus one intervals are completely disjoint, means they are completely, you know, just outside each other, completely have nothing to do with each other. Then this forms a chain, meaning that some less than equal relation they form. So what should be the relation? What should be the condition? Obviously, first condition is that two of them are disjoint. Before we, if you want to say that they are related, obviously they should be disjoint, but which one is bigger than the other? That's that. How do we decide that? Just the most obvious way. Length of the interval. No, think again. Do you think length is such an important thing here? No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. But that's right. But you have to think a little more elegantly in a sense that you have to pick up the watch carefully. See, see, think about like this. Is the length, does the length matter here? Because even if, even if these were not intervals, but you know, just relations. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's all right. So we will say that we will say this is less than if, yes, if A2 is bigger than A1 and just for formality, let me also say that. And um, sorry, yeah, and uh, B1 is lesser than A1. Yeah, right. Basically, I mean that they are disjoint and A1 is, A2 is bigger than A1. So they are like this. The length is not an, not an issue here at all. It is just about intersections. Yeah. So A1, B1 and A2, B2. Yeah, so in this case, I will say that this is the situation. Uh, so I, I, 
Yeah, second condition is wrong. So I mean that I mean that uh, a two is bigger than I mean I can just say a two is bigger than b one, right? Just to encode the fact that they are disjoint also. If I just say that a two is bigger than b one, then I'm also saying that a two is bigger than a one, and you know a two starts after b one ends. Okay, so I do not need to. Say that they are disjoint, but I can say that also. It doesn't matter. Is it okay with everyone? Is the order clear in what way? Just two intervals are disjoint, and the one that is after that we call bigger. Simply, it's not on the length. You can see, okay, just the one that starts after. Mm, okay, and you can see that this is well. It's true that there are so many orders are there, but you can see this is the most. Elegant one, right? And this is just just sticks. Yes. 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 Um. Yes. Right. No. 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 But if I if I'm given the condition that a two is bigger than b one, and then how can they be nested? Okay, so this is just one shot I've described. But you see, you do not have to write like this in the in exam. You do not. You can just write it in your words. You just say that I want them to be disjoint and I want this to be shifted, right? Whatever. It just because I don't expect uh, some in class then just starting. You cannot maybe just write everything in one shot, right? So just write in words. That's completely fine. Okay, and that's how you think, and you just write it. Now to check that this is an order, check this. Now this needs the fact that these are intervals. It will not just work for other things. Okay, these are intervals, and that's why it's working. Okay, check that this is an order. Is an order. Okay. Now how do we continue then? Yes. Okay. So now we draw the poset. Um, yes. Yeah, so we can draw the poset. That's right. But yeah. But do please do this. Don't leave this. Okay. Even if you're super comfortable, just write, write this. Okay. Check that this is a, this the rule does give a partial. Or these are the very important checks. Please do it. Write it. Send it to me also if you want. Just check. It. Yeah. Now we now we draw the resulting poset. We draw or we conceptualize whatever you want to say. Draw the So what do we do here? Rather, it's more like conceptualized poset. Okay. So actually, since said to draw the poset, let's actually take some example and actually draw. Okay, because why not? Okay, three by two and. Maybe we can take whatever five. So I'm just randomly doing. Okay, it's nothing planned. One point one, and then we have. Okay, I'm just taking. Okay, so it's two, uh, two comma four, and so on. Let's just take. Uh, let's take one more. Maybe. Oh. Let's actually draw because I mean I think people want we want to see we want to see it right because this is the first time we are doing so if I imagine if I was doing for the first time I would be completely confused okay it's good to draw so yeah so one comma two okay so okay first of all what is the minimal elements of the poset like what is an element such that it is not bigger than anything what are the elements which are not bigger than anything so what are the minimal elements. Yes, right. Because certainly, so I'm not saying that it is the minimum, but it is certainly that it is nothing is lesser than that, and that's completely clear, right? It cannot be anything because to be something lesser than that, then it has to start before minus one, but that's not. So yeah, let's actually write minus one comma one. 
so that we can see. So we are simultaneously just, you know, since the definition is simultaneously just simultaneously just applying it just to just work it so that we know that we understand. And so some small things can be clarified also. This, okay. Is there any other minimal element? Or you can just think about what is above uh, this one, if there is anything. Or if there is some other minimal element, that also. What about 1, 2? What can we say about this? So this is OK. What can we say about 1, 2? That is also minimal. Is it clear to everyone else? Yeah. Just ask yourself, is there anything which is less than this? Right. And the answer is no. Right. Means that the minus one comma one point one is not less. Yeah, because it's ending after one comma two. It's it's it, this is ending, this is intersecting, it's not disjoint. Right. It is starting earlier, but its ending is a kind of overlaps okay so that's other, that's also minimal okay absolutely that is a point and this is the observation that you are making is very important that any two minimal elements or you take the set of all minimal elements they will always be unrelated that will be one anti chain Right, and that's probably the most important and one of the most important anti chains from the perspective of induction. You can think, right, removing that. So the proofs of the theorems that we have not proved, I and mean, also harder versions are there. They rely on things like this. So you take the minimal elements and you remove them. You get a smaller post set that uh, you can apply some sort of induction. So that's important. That's a good observation. You see, any two minimal elements will always be incomparable. So this is a general thing. But I'm, I'm not asking to not paying emphasis on these things because these are some abstract things, but intuitively at least it should be clear, right? Any two, and in any post set anywhere, minimal elements are incomparable. Minimal just means that there is nothing less than that. Okay, so you can just say X and Y are minimal, are minimal. If, I mean, sorry, this is almost very tautological, right? If fx is less than y, then how can y be minimal? Something is less than that. So x is not less than y. Similarly, so this is not true. And x bigger than y is also a contradiction. Um, whatever, right? You can see. So any two minimal elements or set of all minimal elements is incomparable. They form an anti-chain. Okay. These are some obvious things. Okay. That's why we draw them on the same level. Anyways, let's come, let's finish this. Let's come to this. Yeah, so the one on the top. So what should be there next? What about three comma three by two comma five? Three by two comma five. Yeah. So three by two comma five is certainly bigger than one comma two. Right. And uh, it is it is not bigger than these two. So certainly it is It is just above one comma two. I suppose everybody agrees with that. Yeah. Yeah, it is just above this, but also I am should not give the impression that this is, this is also just above this. Just check. Right. And in this way, you can complete the poset. So I'll leave that. Okay. Complete the poset. Now, please do this. These are exercises. These are not problems. These are small exercises that you should do. Okay. Because unless you do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right. Oh. 
Oh, oh, no, 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 you're right, you're right. Sorry, this is not bigger. So why did I say this? No, this is not bigger, sorry. This is, so this will be just above. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good. So that's, uh, that's, that's, I'm sorry. Yeah. It will be this, yeah. So it should just say 1.5, Yes, so this will be here, it will not be there, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's bigger than this and so on. Yeah, try to complete it now. Yeah, that's that's an important point. Nobody has said it. Okay. In this way, you can complete the puzzle, but, but see, and seeing examples here is not too important. It means in the sense that to solve this problem now, uh, drawing the poset, well, it's fine, but we need to just say something more. What are the chains? So that's fine, all that is saying, but what, is, what are the chains? What is the chain? So chain will just be set of disjoint yeah, mutually disjoint, right? I suppose that's clear, right? Mutually disjoint into ours. I mean, that's the reason how we made the definition, right? Mutually disjoint into ours will form a chain. If I draw three of them like this, you can see that from the chain, okay? And uh, what what will be the anti-chain? Means incomparable elements, okay? Any two, intervals that intersect are incomparable. Is that right? Just think, right? If they intersect, it would be something like this, A2, B2, maybe, maybe like this, and then they are incomparable, right? Can you say that A2, comma, A2 B2 is bigger than A1, B1? No. Can you say that A1B1 is bigger than A2B2? Obviously no, incomparable, right? So if you have three and four intervals like this and they all share a common point, sharing a common point means that they become incomparable. Okay, it means that all three, four, whatever, all of them will be incomparable to each other, you have to show. Any two are incomparable in that. Okay, that's important. Now the problem, is there anything to do now? No, right? Because you have a poset in which there are n squared plus one elements, and so there will be at least a chain of size n plus one or an anti-chain of size n plus one, which just translates to what we need, okay? Prove these small things. Sit and prove these small things, draw this example by these things. Okay, yeah, please do them. I think... Uh... Yeah, so I think today I just plan to do a one hour class. I'll stop here today, but I will continue this thing. I'm planning to just continue this thing tomorrow also, right? I think let us just do this tomorrow also. Okay, uh, I think that will be good so that we just finish off with this tomorrow. Okay, yeah. So let me, but before that, let me just give you one more problem so that you can just try it. It'll be simple enough, but fill in the details, write it. You just get the big picture. That's not enough at this stage in the high school, you have to write everything and you have to know everything or any topic you're studying for the first time. Okay. But especially now you have to be a little rigorous and you have to write. And so here is the thing. So here we have inter here we have uh, integers that are already ordered. So remember this is, in, but this is some order. You can introduce a new order if you need to. These are MN plus one integers. Okay. Yes. So prove, well, actually I didn't need to say this. I could have just said set of, so let's leave this. So set of MN plus one positive integers. Just that's all. Now prove that there exist um either m plus one m plus one of them such that um you know no one of them no one divides the other such that among these m plus one no one divides the other. no one divides the other so i'm not saying they are co-prime it could be four and six 
but four six it could be four six and ten yeah these three are there right they are don't divide each other no one divides the other or all of them you know there is a chain okay or n plus one to write it properly with um one dividing the next among these n plus one obviously okay so it would be a one divided two divided three either this or the polar opposite just the kind of statements we have been looking at so far okay please think about this probably some of you already know what to do but write it that's important okay yeah tomorrow we will see more okay tomorrow we will just see try to we prove the theorems and then we'll move to the uh application means the analysis side of it obviously as i already said so yeah so let's let's sit with this tomorrow okay please uh see this and if any of you need i will upload the thing for the last class of this i think i didn't do it yes So that is also an order. What relationship between what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. No. So. So. Yeah. So there is. So I shouldn't say the what is the rule of that order. So there. It's a good question. So the way to answer this is what is the rule? So see, actually, a rule. is not important yeah a rule is not needed for an order or a relation you see if you think about it you can just abstractly declare which two elements are related without any written linguistically written rule which can be described in words right like if i if i just take this and this is a rather uh, important thing in other cases also for example if i just i just define some just my own wish just define something right i'll just say this and maybe i will put some other things okay so that it becomes uh, i mean uh, what i'm trying to say is that i can just oh wait one second so one is less than 3 one is less than 5 yeah this uh, and also maybe i should put one is one and 2 2 3 3 just put this, so that it satisfies the reflexive now you see there is no rule but this is also an order it is an it's maybe a useless order it's a useless order it's just combinatorially adding the size but it's a useless order but it's an order because it satisfies the property right maths doesn't know the intention maths doesn't know the intuition right maths only encodes the intuition and the intention and gives us a you know machinery that's the thing the, the words don't know what the words mean right we give a meaning so it is just like this this order doesn't this rule is no rule but this is also so there's no there's no rule there's no formula just like there's like functions right when we are small we think of okay a function should have a formula right x by x plus 1 but no a function is just a list right a function if you take a function from if you take a function obviously you know this function from natural to reals it is just a list of it is a list which is indexed by natural numbers one after the other um, uh, A trace are coming, and you're putting a real number in that. That's all it is. There's no, no supposed to be no rule. That is the thing, right? That's all it is. Yeah. So basically, we take a set of numbers, one, two, da, 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 the natural numbers, and we just put an arbitrary order. We just well, it's not arbitrary, but you know this. Yeah. That's one way to say.
Yes, but as you saw, I already gave an example, right? Where they can be. Yes, yeah, in that sense, it cannot be compared. If you completely extend. Uh, yes, in that sense, they cannot be compared. Yeah, or do you want to say, you think you want to say something more? Mm -hmm. No, see there. So yeah, in so complex numbers, com complex numbers cannot be compared. Complex numbers, this is in some sense true and some sense false. Okay, but so com in what sense I'm saying? So complex numbers cannot be compared. So this let let's let's put this like let's uh, let's translate this to there is no total order on the complex numbers. There is no, because already partial order I, uh, I already gave, right? I already gave a partial order and partial order is always there. Just put no order. Empty relation is also an relation, right? So, but yeah, that's nonsense, right? And partial order also I gave, which is quite a rich order. Okay. I, we already saw that coordinate wise, but if we translate this to, there is no total order, then this is false. Okay, why? Because there is a total order and that's your homework, which you have to think. Okay, so I'm what I'm trying to say is that you can, if you take pairs of numbers, C comma D, I mean, you can say, so you can, uh, you can say that I will say like this or no, that was homework, right? Yeah, so just think about it. There is, there is an order just, just based on the, just give precedence to the first coordinate. And if the first coordinate is bigger then you say bigger and if they're equal, then you go to the second coordinate and you can see that. So, so that's a false statement that, um, there is no total order. There is a total order. In fact, by the order that you will think of by that order, you will see that two comma zero will actually become bigger than one comma zero. Now I'm not saying what order because you have to think of it. Okay. Already I think I said a little bit, but okay. So this total order that, so there is a total order. So this is false. Okay. There is a total order and that order actually extends the usual order, but the key, whatever elements were in some order, that order is maintained also. So there is a total order. Okay. So it's a false statement, but in some sense, it is a true statement in the following sense. If you want to give an order, uh, on the complex numbers, if there is a, if you want to give an order on the complex numbers, then you will desire something like this. You will desire some other properties. Now, you know, because complex numbers are not just a set, right? They are more than that. So you will desire this property that I should be able to add on both sides. And, you know, so it should, it should gel with the other addition multiplication properties, right? And so there should be a notion of positive uh, complex, negative complex numbers. Now there is a theorem that says that those things are not possible to do, but that is a little tricky for us to prove right now because not something is not possible is always difficult to prove, right? <laughs> yeah. Like as like when we are, when we are young and immature, we think everything is possible. We don't know things which are not, which you think everything, but as you go, we go older, we go mature. And so we start saying that, okay, this is not for the natural wisdom, right? In, in that sense, right? Proving <laughs> that something is impossible is actually difficult. Okay. So more difficult usually, yeah. but, but in that sense it's true that there is no total order. There is no order which will do like this and which will also, you know, respect multiplication. If the elements are, if Z3 is positive, whatever that means and so on. This thing, there is no such, but how do you prove that? That's a little, so yeah, in that sense, there is no total order, but uh, so there is no useful total order. Okay. But there is a order like this, which is combinatorial useful, but not but actually you're right in some sense this order is just on r2 it is not on the complex numbers because it is nothing it is nothing to do with the multiplication right and so how will you call this complex numbers but yeah order is an order just on the set
So on the set complex numbers, order is there, but on the field complex numbers, which have multiplication, which just field is just a word, okay, multiplication and something that has multiplication and, and in that, there is no complex, there is no order, okay. Yeah, and that creates a lot of difference. That makes a lot of things much harder to prove in C than in R and so on. Like uh, connectedness, but I think most of you have not done all that. So let's leave that. Okay, so that's it for today. I think uh, let's continue this tomorrow, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Okay, and uh, next week we'll, we can do the analysis class, which obviously not everyone is attending. So yeah, tomorrow I think everyone who has attended should attend.